Ron Strahan, the LSU Ag Center. I'm a weed scientist and I'm going to talk to you today about weed management in your vegetable gardens. First of all, uh, if you start tilling up an area, you're going to have weed pressure. Weeds are going to start germinating in those areas. Uh, the thing about weeds is they're competing with our plants for some limited resources. They're competing for nutrients, for water, and they also will shade out your plants. Uh, the thing is, we, we fertilize our gardens. We may also be fertilizing weeds. So. Uh, the idea here is to understand weeds, a little bit about the biology of the, of the plants. First of all, we have broad leaves, and a broad leaf, as the name implies, but not always to your eyes, um, has a wide leaf. Not always to your eyes, but uh, if you looked at it under a microscope, you would see uh, veins running in different directions on a broad leaf. Also, another thing about a broad leaf is it makes showy flowers. Now, this is sow thistle. And it's somewhat common, you start tilling uh, some soil up, you'll start seeing south thistle. But it's a broad leaf. It, uh, it has somewhat wide leaves and uh, veins going in different directions. This just happens to be an annual. Uh, here in these begonias, you may also see another uh, broad leaf. The, weed's not, uh, the, the leaves are not so wide on it. This is uh, Eclipta, and you can see it's also making a showy flower. It's trying to attract insects for pollination. Here in this begonia pot, we have an infestation of Asiatic hawksbeard, also a broadleaf. Notice the veins going in different directions. And also notice the showy flowers. Again, it's trying to attract insects for pollination. Now, as that flower matures, it becomes kind of a puffball of seeds. And this is in the uh, dandelion family. And uh, these seeds become parachutes and they fly through the air. So this is a broadleaf. Uh, with all these weeds, they're going to be competing with your crop. So this just happens to be a begonia, but that could be a tomato plant, or that could be sweet corn. You know, the thing is, weeds are competing for nutrients, for water. They'll also shade out your plants. They can potentially grow over your plants, like this eclipta here could actually grow over this plant. Food production occurs in the leaves of plants. That's photosynthesis. And if these plants grow over your plants, uh, sunlight can't get to the leaves of your of your plants, and sunlight is an important component of photosynthesis. So that's broad leaves. There are lots of different broad leaves uh, in your gardens. We're growing mainly broad leaves. We're growing butter beans. We're growing tomatoes. So you're growing broad leaves, and you have weeds that are broad leaves infesting your tomatoes. Now you may also have some grass plants. So I have a couple of grass plants here. And this just happens to be a goosegrass right here. See, this is the seed head of goosegrass. This is actually the flower of a goosegrass plant, of a grass plant. And uh, so it's not showy. It's not really trying to attract insects for pollination. But this, uh, this grass plant, another thing about it is, I mentioned on broad leaves, the veins go in different directions. But on a grass plant, the veins run parallel. And you can see they're not going in different directions. They're running parallel. And uh, so this is a grass plant. We also have uh, a crabgrass here, and this is the flower of the crabgrass. These are both annual grasses, annual grasses. And uh, crabgrass also, if you notice the veins on the leaves, the veins are also running parallel. Unlike a broadleaf, the veins run um, different directions on a broadleaf. So the thing about grasses, and broad leaves, if they're annuals, they're going to produce lots and lots of seeds. This grass plant here, this crabgrass, can produce about 10,000 seeds per plant, and they have longevity in the soil. The seeds have longevity in the soil. This crabgrass will germinate in February or March, grow throughout the summer, and as we, as it starts producing seeds, we get into the fall, it'll die back and drop the seeds down, and that's next year's crop, and several years worth of crops because the seeds can live. Uh, for a good while in the soil. So we have broad leaves, we have grasses. We also have another category, and that category is sedges. Sedges. Now this is purple nut sedge. Purple nut sedge is the number one ranked weed problem in the world. Number one in the world. It looks like a grass plant, but it's not a grass. It's a sedge, a completely different family than grasses. This is the Cyperaceae family. And uh, sedges, as, as I mentioned, uh, this purple nut sedge is ranked number one in the world of all crops, the number one weed problem of all crops. So it's very hard to get rid of it. This is a perennial. It produces underground storage organs, like this tuber right here, that allows this plant to come back 
from year to year. Uh, it, it's a warm season perennial that will be burned back by, by frost and cold weather. But as we warm back up, it comes back out and it sprouts from these tubers that are in the soil. When you hand remove it, you leave the tubers in the soil and uh, it'll come right back. So it's very hard to get rid of. Uh, you get temporary satisfaction usually when you hand remove it. Now, uh, another thing about sedges, uh, grasses can have round or flat stems. Sedges have triangular stems. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is a triangular stem right here. And I'm gonna cut that stem and show you what I'm talking about. And you can see that it's more of a triangle. Again, grasses are gonna have flat stems or they're gonna have round stems. So this is a, more of a triangular stem. It's not a grass, even though it looks like a grass. So we talked a lot about some of the weeds you might uh, see in the field, uh, some of the characteristics that will help you identify. Now let's go out into the field and look at some of the weeds that will be infesting your vegetable gardens. So this is a real common grass plant that you may see infesting your gardens. This is goosegrass. See the flower of the goosegrass, the seed production that's occurring? A tremendous seed producer. Uh, it's a grass plant. We have a broadleaf plant here right beside it, and that's the south thistle I was mentioning earlier. It's a broadleaf, see the veins going in different directions. We also have a pigweed right here. Pigweed is also a broadleaf. This is the flower of pigweed. Not showy to your eyes, but showy to an insect. Notice the veins going in a different direction. Uh, pigweed is a tremendous seed producer. It's an annual. There's a tremendous seed producer. Produces up to a million seeds, and the seeds have great longevity in the soil. They can live for 30 to 50 years. So pigweed is a big, big problem and you don't want to allow this plant to produce uh, to produce seeds because it's going to produce crops, uh, a crop of seeds for generations to come. So we may also see another uh, a perennial grass that we've been talking about annual grasses but there are also perennial grasses too and this is Bermuda grass and Bermuda grass is a perennial grass that also produces seeds but mainly creeps into areas. It's very hard to get rid of it's very hard to hand remove. It just breaks off in your hand when you try to remove it. This is also a grass plant. If you could see really well, you'd see that the veins are running in uh, parallel with this grass plant. But this has underground storage organs that makes it a perennial plant. It has rhizomes that run underground. This is a big problem in flower beds, and it's a big problem in vegetable gardens too. It's a grass plant. Contrast that with this soybean, which is a broadleaf crop actually in this case. So another common plant, a uh, broadleaf plant, it's another annual that you're going to find growing in your vegetable garden, is common purslane. Common purslane. There's a cultivated type of purslane that makes pretty flowers. This one really doesn't make a pretty flower. So uh, common purslane is a broadleaf, and it starts germinating in uh, March, and uh, now it's starting to flower here and produce a crop of seed. So uh, another tremendous seed producer that forms a mat in our vegetable gardens, but this is common purslane, a broadleaf. So we also have sedges that are big issues in uh, gardens. And you can see right here that this is purple nut sedge. Notice the flower of the purple nut sedge. See the sedges here attacking in numbers. It does produce a few viable seed, but it's mainly reproducing, mainly reproducing underground with tubers. So you till the soil, you're not getting rid of it you hand remove it, you're not getting rid of it because it produces all these tubers. It's number one weed problem in the world for a reason. So these are just some of the weeds you may see growing in your vegetable garden. 